Hello my Wicked Vibers, I'm Macadamia, and today on So Stitch Hex, I'm going to be doing a review on Curses, Hexes, and Crossing by S. Connolly. It's a magician's guide to execration magic. This is by far one of my favorite books. If you can't tell, it is well read. I've read it through once with sticky notes. I've read it through with actual annotations. It is one of my absolute favorites. And while I do always complain about authors who oversaturate their works with the works of another author, um, a good example being Tomas's, Tomas Prower's uh, La Santa Muerte, uh, being heavily ever saturate, saturated with Christopher Penzak's work and being very clear that they have a like author boner on them. Uh, I very, very much have a like book boner for S. <laughs> Connolly. I love their work. I own so many of their books. I don't own all of them because there is a lot, but I find all of them to be like perfect. They are like, I do see the criticisms in there. But I adore them. So, to start, uh, this book is very thorough in explaining what is curse work. And this introduction actually does really... This was like the second book I ever officially read for witchcraft. And I just adore it. So the actual definition of a curse to start in this book, being on page 7, is a noun... Verb, cursed or cursed, cursing. The expression of a wish that misfortune, evil, doom, etc. befall a person, group, etc. A formula or a charm intended to cause such misfortune to another. The act of reciting such a formula. And you go on. And the 14th definition, because yes, this goes on for 15 technically, is to excommunicate. So exorcisms are a form of execration magic. Included in Hexes, Curses, and Crossing. Talks about hexes, which is to bewitch, practice witchcraft on, to spell, or to charm. And crossings, which is the act of opposing or thwarting, frustration, contradiction. A good example being, there is something that is bringing you unhappiness, discomfort, or misery in some way and you banish it from your life whether that be an individual a demon you are kind of exercising it you are getting rid of it you are also putting malicious intent on someone who deserves it pretty easy this book talks about the importance of dealing with pain before you deal with a curse which is really important and I haven't really read a cursing book that hasn't brought it up. Every book I've talked about that does have a malicious topic or a darker, not like kosher topic, does bring to the front that sometimes when you go to curse someone, you really are trying to work on something in yourself. Maybe it is a part of your shadow, a part of you that you are rejecting, or a part of you that brings you discomfort like maybe you are just annoyed with this person them being annoying does not necessarily mean you should curse them however i am of the mind that if you look inside yourself and you decide this isn't about me they're just a bitch have at it like i mean you do you boo you do you it's you versus them and if something happens it happens one of the biggest factors that kind of impacted my growth and my current status as a witch and my ideas are when they talk about, I feel I'm helping the magician learn how to deal with such things when and if they ever run across them. This means in studying curses, you also learn how to break them and repel them. There is no black and white when it comes to magic only shades of gray because magic is really a balanced practice you can't be all light or all dark because neither is healthy if you are all one or the other 
And even then, the lines do get heavily blurred. Imagine if you're just going around cursing people willy-nilly versus some vigilante cursing pedophiles. Are you going to get mad at someone who's cursing distinct pedophiles? People we that it is confirmed. I doubt you're going to get mad. If you're getting mad at them, then we're going to look at you and question your morals. Like, someone, you know, just saying. If you're going around and telling victims of assault that, oh, you need to smile. It's okay. It's all in the plan. And you're like suffocating them with this toxic positivity. You're going to get punched in the face and no one's going to feel bad about it because you're a jackass and need to reevaluate your life choices. So while there is a good and evil, there is also this mixed gray area that often just gets black and white. Now, one thing I also adore about this novel and about all of the works by S. Connolly is their attention to detail in mentioning the history. So chapter four just talks about so, so much on the history of curses. It includes a lot of curses in the book. And there's, there's not one definitive curse I can point out. Although, of course, there's all the really cute ones like the Gaelic curses that I have no hope of pronouncing. There's mention of the Greek of Roman, African, Indian, Asian, and then Central Asia. North Celtic curses. And it's all very brief, but it's detailed enough that you're like, whoa. It's even called A Brief History of Cursing. Cursing in the Ancient World. Like I said earlier, every culture back to ancient Egypt kept curses in a very prominent place in their magical arsenals. They're, they were as commonplace as blessings are today. Across cultures and continents, you can find curses. Curses are mentioned in Canaanite and Sumerian mythology. Usually the curse was an utterance wherein the mere act of saying what you wanted to happen to an enemy was considered a curse. In many ancient cultures, the act of making cursed pottery wherein the names of your enemies were etched into it before it was fired was common. Then, once the pot was taken out of the kiln, it was broken and buried. Archaeologists have dug up numerous pots such as this in Egypt. The thing I love about the style of writing is that it's very easy to comprehend. It is very personal. It feels like they're talking to you. You don't feel as if you're being spoken down to or if they're talking over your head. They put it very bluntly and very clearly. You understand what they're saying and you have no confusion about what they're trying to get into your brain. Some people might right in a way that makes them sound like well since i have all this experience you will have no way of understanding and like while they do have a massive amount of experience and personal practice in this field they talk to you as if you are an equal they talk to you and say no you don't have the length of time that i have invested in this but if you practice and study every day a little bit over the years, you're going to get it. It's not rocket science. You can understand. And that's why I really just enjoy this author so, so much. Another part that I greatly loved about this book is going into chapter 5, where they talk about advanced magic is magic you create yourself. It's magic you create yourself which manifests results so regular magic or i guess so if you have easy and you got moderate and then you got advanced easy is like oh look at these little rocks they bring me joy moderate will be okay this is the spell this is what it says to use i'm following it there's steps one two and three and they're laid out advanced would be okay this plant and rock and blah 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 is associated with this thing that I need to happen. Now I'm going to take these steps that will get me 
to the desired outcome that I want. And advanced magic is making it happen. Which something that is brought up in here at various parts is that a magic, just like they said, even in the history of the curses, the mere utterance is a curse itself because you are manifesting what you want. To spell is a curse. Just writing it down, I mean, to spell is to spell. Just writing it down is a curse in itself because you are still making clear to the cosmic wonders what you want. And that works with any necessary spell. That is not to say that you are unable to come across someone who has a stronger will or a stronger sense of magic than you. That is just to say that you can put it out there just by stating it. Whether that's strong or weak really depends on your conviction and who you're up against and their conviction. They also put down a nice definition of ritual, which is to ceremoniously manifest the change. So the change that you wish to seek in the magic, you would create through ritual. While ritual is not necessarily required, I consider any act of magic that I'm doing to be a small type of ritual. Not necessarily a ceremony, because that to me feels like a larger thing. But I do appreciate their language here. I feel like the way they break it down in this book really helps you to learn some of the terminology and helps you to understand what you might be doing or what you can do. And by giving you the language that you need to work farther in your craft, I feel it provides a very foundation for creating this balanced work. Because if you know what you're doing, then you're not just doing it. And I find knowing what you're doing instead of just doing it does make it a little bit easier. And terminology is one of the hardest parts, honestly, of any field, whether it be magic or mundane. I mean, think about all the vocabulary you do in any school. It's the hard part. Page 37 has a lovely, lovely comment that I actually found to be adorable. Talking about, keep in mind any color symbols or correspondences you would, need, you would need to make your divine guest comfortable. And I love that phrasing because they talk about you are working with a deity. Know, what, know that deity because it is a relationship that you have with the deity. And I do have a video on that if you'd like to look it up. But basically, it's a friendship. You have to work on that relationship you have with them and know what they like. If you know someone doesn't like tea and you offer them tea when they wanted wine what are you doing or if you offer them tea that is of an herb that they don't like versus when you know what they enjoy it's it's just kind of disrespectful in a way that it shows you're not paying attention and you're not committed to getting them something good like you're asking for their help but you're not doing anything for them and in that way you want to make your divine guest comfortable and I find that to be a lovely way to think of it. I actually put a candle on a, like a candle holder, kind of, uh, not quite a candelabra, not quite a sconce, but it hangs on the wall and it's precious. I found it at a Goodwill and spray painted it pink because if it's not pink and purple, it's black and this one was pink. Uh, I put a candle on there and I light it when the spirits that I'm working with are welcome in my home and I leave it lit for the duration of the time that they are welcome to work with me. When I'm no longer accepting of guests, I will blow it out because you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. I gotta go to bed and I don't need spirits bippity boppity booing in my house. Boo somewhere else. I'm sorry, honey. And so I found their phrasing for that to be absolutely adorable. They did have a lovely section on the important parts of a spell, which I will read. I adore this. Breaking down the spell into five parts. Define the spell's purpose and desired outcome. Create the words of power to charge the spell. Being specific in your purpose, purpose and desired outcome. Important note, make sure it is extremely specific. Don't make it something that can be reinterpreted by the universe. 
I mean, I write like three to four page spells because I know exactly what I need to happen and I want to put down the I, the qualifiers of not this, 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 or this. This is not allowed. These are the specifics of what I want. These are the ways that I would expect it to manifest. These are, you know, options. And I even put that in there like, hey, if you want an idea of what to do to help me out, here's some ideas. But like, girl, it's up to you. I'm just, you know, trying to make your job even easier because you got enough going on. You know what I mean? That's what I do. That's just me personally. Assemble the proper sigils, herbal mixes, and magical items. Four is perform the spell. And five is post spell follow up. As with ritual, many spells and other areas of magic must be followed up on. However, with execration, there is not always the case unless a spell specifically calls for follow-up, which can be a mixture of journaling on any visions or divination that you may have experienced related to the spell work or any signs and synchronicities that you may have gained from the incident, performing a breaking of the spell if they have learned their lesson, strengthening of it be it shaking a jar or a box like mediation between you and another individual or it could just be profiting from whatever you desired be it the new job now you have the new job now you work that new job you wanted new money now you have an opportunity to save money now save the money you wanted a new relationship you were given the opportunity to branch out to new people it is up to you to follow up on that gift of the opportunity you have to put in the work too another thing about this book is it does bring up the idea of the multi-day curses so curses that go over many days say it goes over seven days or it is a curse where every time you think about them you might shake something or tap something or repeat the spell be it a short one hopefully and it's the multi-day curse does work slower in some cases but it also weakens them over time so it's kind of like a constant illness that doesn't get treated going on and on until it becomes a true problem they talk about a really interesting thing i wanted to point out oh everything in this book is interesting to cut out the part to cut it down to the parts that i like which is difficult so you have a lemon curse uh, which is um, lighting a candle and cutting a slit into a lemon. In the slit, you'll place a picture of your enemy. And as you visualize your anger toward the person, you use one of the nails to pierce the lemon. Then one by one, insert the nails into the lemon, still projecting your energy into the lemon. Now place it in a bowl and fill it halfway with cursing oil. Leave the bowl upon your altar and allow the lemon to rot. As the lemon rots, so does the luck and life of the person being cursed. Once the lemon has rotted completely, feel free to bury it in a shallow grave somewhere. And a note about it, this curse can be widely found all over the internet as I discovered while trying to research the actual origin. And they never found the origin. And so this is, like, while there are many different variations, this is their variation, which is pretty basic. And I appreciate that. I find this spell which is a very popular one and if you haven't heard one like this then i'd be highly surprised or you're not really into execration magic and i'm surprised you're watching this i found it really cool in comparison to uh the lemon uncrossing spell spell to break a curse which is it's a protection spell and it's interesting because fruit and citrus are used for both uh, protection and execration also for exorcism, although I typically would use either a lemon or a lime, even though I think limes were made by scientists, like they weren't real. And they just like bred stuff to make them. I'm pretty sure that was limes, which I thought, I thought that was crazy. This one is in a sachet, combine a teaspoon of St. John's wort, sage, calamus, and dragon's blood powder. And then you're going to light candles and incense. Hold the lemon between your palms and imagine it drawing the negativity from you. 
Once you've done that, you'll dip the ritual knife in salty water and slice into the lemon into three pieces. And imagine your negativity going, you'll say the spell, and you'll take each slice of the lemon and dip it into the salt, making sure it is very well coated. Imagine dipping strawberries in sugar. Mm -hmm. And then leave, that wasn't in the book, I just, that's how I picture it. You'll leave the lemon pieces on the altar where they can dry. And once they're dry, the spell is done, the curse should be broken, and then just carry the satchel with you and you're good. And I thought those were really cute in comparison because it's the idea of the curse is jamming all these horrible things together and the blessing is breaking it apart so that it can get air but also like I, I don't I liked I loved how those correlated if I don't know if that gets across but this this idea of that how opposite they are and how perfectly they are because they are opposite and like visually I just chef's kiss beautiful beautiful another thing that I adored about this is on um, they're basically going on about how they love the Bible because it is basically just fancy book of spells. If you don't believe it, uh, you didn't read it. And it's really funny. Because while I'm not a, the biggest fan, I do love this. Like, page 70, they straight up say, Not only that, but there is a list of cursing psalms. I love the Bible. And they list psalms after the 25th psalm, uh, which is a long one. And basically, there's almost like a whole chapter of just Psalms that are just curses. But if you have a Bible, and if you live in the Bible Belt, you do. It's just like 15 pages of Psalms curses. And I found that just, it's just hilarious. Because the book itself isn't even that long. The book itself is only 142 pages. And 15 pages are just from the Bible. I found that just good good especially for people who think oh you can't be christian and do curses and it's like your whole like there's a whole section and christian curses are hella hella mean like if you haven't read a christian curse oof i could never page 85 brings up this lovely topic about using languages that you know which i do find really funny there's a really good spell in a book that i read that in spanish is more meaningful but my pronunciation of spanish words is jank so is my pronunciation of like latin and french i kind of butcher any language including english so but i wouldn't try to say it in that language Unless it was a specific song to a deity and I was doing my best. But even then I would try to also include the English because like I can say those words somewhat. But if you don't know the language you're speaking, you might be saying something you don't know what you're saying. And just be asking for something absurd. Be like trying to ask for the bathroom but really you said, can I take the banana out of your pocket and put it in the coffee? Or something like ridiculous. And so it's important to only use languages that you understand and only use sentences you can actually translate, not just take someone's word for it. Because you don't know what people be doing. People be telling you crazy stuff just to get you to do it, to either look stupid or to fuck your life up. Watch your back. Just saying. You gotta keep your eyes open. I also enjoyed their approach to once you have accepted whether or not you should do this type of work, accepting the responsibility regardless of the outcome. Like it does not matter if it's the outcome you wanted. Accepting responsibility is up to you because you started this whole mess. Sometimes we ever shoot and a blinding uh, and a binding becomes a curse. And yet we still have to be willing to take responsibility for the magic we work. And that's very important to remember. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. If you fuck up, you gotta admit you fucked up. Simple as that. 
Um, there's like a whole cute little section. It's very short. It's like a brief mention of energy vampires and that type of negative energy, as well as an entire reference guide to some of the concepts here, which I found really adorable. I find I'm like a major slut for a reference guide, as well as a very detailed bibliography, which they have a lovely bibliography. Although they are in their own bibliography, which I just think is really funny. I mean, it makes sense, but it's also really funny. A good bibliography is basically just a to-be-read list. Because while, yes, it is nice to read the important, like, key points that are pertaining to the topic at which you're reading, which is what those references are, it's always nice to go directly to the source and get the full story and full understanding of the context and of the topic itself. So I love a good bibliography. I have a part that I love and I gotta go to it. A lot of my notes are honestly writing this, this curse with the spell breaking curse and how they connect to one another. Oh, this is a really cute part. I, I just, I gotta mention this. So, someone tells you you've been cursed. The act of telling someone they've been cursed is a curse by itself meant to incite a self-fulfilled prophecy. Psychological warfare. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'll always say it. That's brilliant. <laughs> and that's one of the things I, like, I honestly love because while it is kind of shady, and lazy it's more so it's less lazy and more so efficient work smarter not harder because they're gonna think they're cursed and they're gonna blame you for everything and if they truly believe that if they're in the wrong they're gonna be attacked by their own magic for cursing you for something you didn't do when you did nothing at all then really they're just gonna be digging themselves into a deeper and deeper pit which is just brilliant make them do all the work I mean they Put themselves in the situation in the first place. <laughs> so on this page 129, I love this psychic self-defense, which you can use in defense of, you know, vampires in cases of someone sending curses or negative energy to you. This is one of those magical operations wherein being well-versed in the astral magic is beneficial. And basically, it's grounding, cleansing, and emptying your mind and your space, clearing the way to get things done. But then you also have to ask yourself, is this an asshole or is he just stressed? By using the powers of observation, you can see what the underlying cause of the negativity is and which approach to take with different people with regard to your interactions with them. Instead of reacting and adding your own negativity to the mix, observe and fill out the situation first. Basically, what they said in the beginning and what a lot of people mention is reflect on whether this is an idiot or you're just mad. If they're an idiot, you know, you do you, whatever. If you're just mad, try to get over it before you do anything crazy. If you can't get over it, like, no one's stopping you. No one's stopping you. Who's, who's gonna, how would they know? No one's gonna know. They're gonna know. They're gonna know. But it's gonna take them a minute to know, so, I mean. But, yeah. Reflect on it first. Divine about it, do some divination, get all your facts together. Knowledge is power. They said at the beginning, they said at the end, it's a lovely book end for the book to announce. Think about it before you do it. Here's how to do it. Think about it before you do it. Okay. And I love that. It's at the beginning and the end because, you know, when you have a long list, you remember the beginning and the end and the stuff in the middle gets a little lost. So the fact that they said it twice. Twice. Beautiful. I love that. 
I want to get the books I can buy them, and then I want to get them all signed. That would probably cause me to faint. I haven't fainted from joy before, but I'm sure it's going to happen. It's on my list. It is on my list. Um, on that same vein of being educated and understanding, they do harp on the fact to be aware, but not paranoid. Because there is a difference, which I will cover in my Signs and Synchronicities video that's coming up. There is a difference between being vigilant and looking and being paranoid. No, that car is not following your home. You just happen to live on a busy street. Could they be? Sure. Anything is possible. But being overly paranoid is going to cause you stress and is going to perpetuate a self-fulfilling prophecy of chaos for you. You're going to be drawing that negativity, drawing that like energetic attention from whatever is stressing you out, and you are going to cause yourself more problems. You need to clear your mind and think about it rationally. Observe. Knowledge is power. Now, one of the last things that I would like to take away from this is their, honestly, their parting word. The very last part before the bibliography, of course, is perfect. And this is just another reason why I fell in love with this author. S. Connolly is wonderful, fantastic, beautiful. I just, oh, everything, everything. A parting word. In conclusion, dear reader, I hope this book has offered some perspective and information about a taboo topic that is too often misunderstood. And as Grandma Jenna used to say, keep pots of rosemary next to the front and back doors to keep evil out and grow garlic in your garden to ward off those who would take your property. Use this book with care and consideration and always remember to have no remorse or regrets and to take responsibility for all the magic you work. Again, this book is not the beginning and end of all execration magic. There are several other books out there that dare discuss the subject. It's my hope that this addition of execration magic to your knowledge and practice will help to manifest more positive growth change in your life like it has mine. May Lucifer light your way, S. Connolly. I absolutely love that. I love that so much especially no remorse no regrets take responsibility and go like bless such bless this book is in every way that i can imagine perfection and i'm so glad it was like one of the first books it was literally the second book on magic that i read after coming out of the the broom closet and before, I'd been very skeptical about witchy books because some of them seemed a little cheesy, too much love and light. They seemed too theatrical. They didn't seem real. I'd never read Raven, Sil Silver Raven Wolf's Ride a Broomstick or whatever that book is called. But they are that kind of level of cheesy that just turns you off from books. I read similar books books to them and they really did turn you away but this is such a beautiful text and it doesn't encourage you to do dark magic it actually asks you to reflect on what you're doing and why you're doing it so that you know the true purpose behind your actions it gives you the history it gives you the knowledge it gives you positive and the negative sides of both so you can figure it out on your own and it reminds you to look inward the beginning and the end. And it rem also reminds you to take responsibility regardless of whether it comes out the wrong way. It is an absolutely beautiful work of art. And honestly, I even if I tried, I couldn't find any real problems with this book. I know there are problems, but my biggest problem is that I can't have this experience of reading this book for the first time again. Because it is one of my favorites. I've had this particular book for damn near six or seven years. I've had this book for like six years at least. And it is one of my absolute favorites. I've probably read it four times. Which for a book that can, includes history and spell work. And me reading the spells again and again. Even though typically I will just skim the spells. Because it's a spell book part. 
that's like a recipe book. You don't necessarily read the recipes. I read this one because I find it so beautiful, so wonderful. This author is everything to me, and I highly recommend it. If you want a book, please get this one. I appreciate you so much, my Wicked Vipers. I hope you enjoy this book review and this long discussion of a long-awaited book that I've just been trying to find the time and energy to give it the attention it so rightly deserves. If you would like, you can check out my Amazon Associate link down below to get your own copy. Or if there is an Audible, I will have a promo code down below for you to use to get one month free trial. I highly recommend this. Please give it a go. Give it a gander. It'd be fantastic, and you will think it is as beautiful as I. All right. Mwah. Have a wicked evening, and I hope to see you here next time on Sosta Checks. Bye.